you would just continue to uh, be who you are to all of us. Uh, we thank you, we praise you, honor you, glorify us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So, so I want to, um, I told you I wanted to kind of get into this very um, sort of odd and strange and difficult conversation around God's providence, right? We talked about that on Sunday uh, in the sermon when we looked at the story of Joseph and clearly saw God's providence throughout. Um, if you notice, how many of y'all watched Midweek Man? Right? If you notice, um, I offered the scripture uh, that it come from Job chapter 13, 15, that that, that verse 15, that A clause, with, it says, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Yeah. Right? What a, what a powerful declaration that he made after having dealt with all of the stuff that he dealt with uh, to say that even though this is God's will, this is God's providential will for me, I will continue to trust in him. Um, and so, again, this subject, it's, it's not easily understood, and it's, it's one that we're not going to, you know, get completely uh, together in one night. This is something that, you know, takes time to really to get into, and to, you know, there's still a lot of questions um, that we ask. So the purpose is really just to kind of introduce us um, to this doctrine um, as a way to support our discipleship as believers, as followers of Christ. Amen? Amen. So I, I, I'm saying that, kind of a disclaimer, that there may still be questions that go unanswered. Because truth be told, this is one of those things that just, it, it, it leaves you with more questions than answers. But yet there is some hope and some encouragement in having the conversation, okay? So, for the, we're still in that, in this third quarter, the third quarter is coming to an end, right? September ends the third quarter, but we're still focusing on trusting his way, right? Starting off, um, right, guarding our witness. And then we went to obeying his will. And so we still in this mode of trusting his way. God's way is not always understood. God's way is not always appreciated. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Yes. Right? <laughs> but because he knows more than we know, it's, 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 it's our, I would say, both privilege and pleasure to trust him. So trust his way, the providence of God. You see, we have this compass. You know, I, that's, my, that's, that's, that's who the Holy Spirit is for me. He's the compass. Right? So 
the word uh, providence is a form of the word provide. Uh, providence is a Latin word, provid, uh, providentia, which comes from the Latin word providere, or providere, excuse me, meaning to foresee, to attend to, right? Pro means before, videre means to see. So here's our working sort of definition for tonight. The providence of God, therefore, is the continual foreseeing of and attendance to the care and control of his creation. That's going to be our, our working definition for tonight. So it is the continual foreseeing of and attendance to the care and control of his creation. Right? And more than the foresight that comes from God's providence is the attending to. Right? Not only does God see, but God acts. Mm -hmm. Right? It's 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 knowing the need before you have the need. Mm -hmm. Or I should say, it's God providing for the need before you even know you have the need. Mm -hmm. yes. It's that sort of insight, that wisdom, that only can come from him that makes his providence different than anybody else's. Right? We can have an intuition about things, and, and want to, you know, make sure that we have uh, this thing or that thing, but we can't see but so far, right? You ever just stand outside of your house and just look straight, and then at some point your visual field ends, right? There's a point at which you cannot see anymore, but God can not only see, but this says that he's already seen. So while we're in our present, God is already in the future, yet still in the present and in the past at the same time. How marvelous is that? How remarkable is that? So it's, it's not just him seeing it ahead of time. It's him making a way, attending to, meeting the need beforehand. So that when we, uh, Emeritus used to say, like, when you catch up with tomorrow, tomorrow, y'all remember he said that? Mm -hmm. When you get to that place, God's already done what's necessary for us mm -hmm. to be taken care of. Now, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but let me just say this now because it, it seems fitting. That does not mean that suffering and sorrow and pain won't meet you there when you show up to it. Okay? So God makes the way. God meets the need, but that doesn't mean that you won't be sad. That, mean, that doesn't mean that, that, the way that, that, that the way he is making involves pain. I know, that's not, it's not, a, it's not a fun topic. But that's the truth. Sometimes we are led into that pain and it's not without purpose. Right? It's not without function. It's not just random. There is nothing uh, random about God and, and his will and his way. It's not. It's all based on his divine intellect, which, by the way, none of us can comprehend. None of us can. I mean, you got some really, really smart people out there, but their smartness isn't even like his fingernail clippings. Right? I don't know. <laughs> so, this again. The providence of God is the continual foreseeing of 
and attendance to the care and control of his creation. So, this is one of the catechisms that kind of encompasses that, that statement, okay? This is in the Reformed Church. The Heidelberg Catechism states that God's providence is his almighty and ever-present power, whereby as with his hand, he still upholds heaven and earth and all creatures, and so governs them that leaf and blade, rain and drought, fruitful and barren years, food and drink, health and sickness, riches and poverty, indeed all things come to us not by chance. Right? This is not fate. Because fate does not have the same end as providence. Right? When we think about the providence of God, there is an ultimate end that occurs. Doesn't matter what the circumstance is. But faith is, is really random. It could be good, it could be not good. But that's not how God works. God is not a, a God of chance. You don't, you don't roll the dice and hope that you hit seven or eleven. I don't know nothing about it, but <laughs> I heard about it. <laughs> But understand this, that every single thing that you can think of is governed by God. Mm -hmm. Where a bird flies and lands and decides to eat is governed by God. What you put on today was governed by God. I know you thought it was, I know you're thinking, no, I, I, I just, this is my choice. Yeah, you had a choice in it, but understand it was governed by God. There was a reason why you chose what you chose. There was a reason why you ate what you ate. There was a reason why you selected the beverage you selected. Because it's all governed and orchestrated by God. And guess what? It's not insignificant. I know that many of us think that God don't care about you know, if I eat this piece of chicken, what well, he actually does. He actually does. Have you ever been late to work? Has anybody ever been late to work? Oh, all the time. All the time, right? <laughs> but have you ever been late to work and then found out later that there was an accident on your route? Mm -hmm. Or that uh, there was some construction that started after you got past that. Have you, you know, have you ever heard, seen that sort of stuff? Like, if I was five minutes early out my door, right, right. that might have been me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean that God is, is, is unjust to the person that got into the accident and that he's just to you because he spared you from the accident. Mm -hmm. It just means that God's plan is what prevailed. I can't explain that. I don't necessarily understand how God determines and decides. But I do know and believe that he directs all things because he is over all things. So, yeah, some days you wake up late and you hustle to get yourself together so that you can move out. But it wasn't without purpose. It's not a random thing. Now, if you just, here's the thing, if you just... You know, careless. I'm going to advise you to, you know, set your alarm clock. <laughs> Get up. You know, do some things a little bit earlier. Like, like I'll use myself as an example. When school started, but prior to school starting, and I go down Eastern Avenue, I get to uh, Franklin Boulevard, and it's clear. Because nobody's, you know, the kids aren't back in school. Now, like today, I left at regular time. And it's stacked up traffic. Why? Because everybody's back in school. Everybody's trying to get their kids to school and, and get to work and all that other stuff. So now I have to, you know, make 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 a, a different choice. I, I got to take that into consideration. 
and, and know that sometimes I feel compelled and moved to deviate from my original route. I'm sitting there thinking, do I, do I you know, take those side streets and then go down over to Hamilton? Because then I can get Hamilton all over and, and bam, I'm there. But then what if everybody else is thinking the same thing? <laughs> Or should I just be patient and sit here and then wait till the traffic moves? All of that matters to God. And all of it is orchestrated by God. Even though it's my brain thinking and, and making those decisions and, and, and considerations, it is God using it for his glory. I know. Me getting to work on time brings God glory. Me <laughs> Sister Renee's like, oh, I guess I'm not glorifying. <laughs> <laughs> Me, do, you doing that, right? You choosing the, the, the fruit or vegetable over the sugary sweet dessert glorifies God. It matters to Him. It, it really does. Mm. And so. What I'm, what I'm really just trying to get at, y'all, is that we need to pay attention to these things. Yes. Because as a disciple of Christ, our thought process, our actions do matter to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And, moreover, they matter to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. They matter to those that are connected to you. They matter to those that you will encounter along the way. And so God... As much as he is concerned about the centipede that eventually becomes a butterfly, he is, he is, he is concerned about you, about your hopes, your dreams, about your health, about what you're watching on TV, all of those things. Amen? Amen. It says it in the Bible. Matthew 10 and 30. It says, and even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. Mm. Right? God is concerned about the minute details of your life. Mm. I mean, I know we don't think about it, and I tell you right now, so now I'm fresh my hair. Sometimes I see it, see it on the floor. I'm like, okay, God, you Keep some of that. <laughs> you know, I want to keep more, you know, on there. Um, but when Jesus was saying this, he was talking about, you know, um, the difference between the sparrows, right? And, and then, you know, his care and concern for nature doesn't outweigh his care and concern for us, mm -hmm. right? God created it, therefore... He's going to take care of it. He's going to control it, right? God is the one who supplies. God is the one who determines what is needed, when it's needed, why it's needed, where it's needed, and how it will be supplied. Okay? It's not circumstantial, but it's divinely orchestrated. God is the one behind the scenes doing the work, right? And God can use whatever means he wants to to make it work, okay? God is not just as concerned with your soul's salvation. Uh, God is not more concerned with your soul's salvation and not concerned with other things. All of it, as I said, matters. God is not just concerned with the big picture. He is also concerned with the details. Now, let's pause for a minute because if you're not asking the question already, you're really not following along. Because I, at this point, was like asking God, okay, I got I, I to ask this. You know, how does this work with free will? How does this you know, bump up against, support, you know, not support the idea of free agency. Here's the thing. 
God's providence does not impede or infringe on the free agency of humanity because we still have the privilege to choose to obey or disobey his will because God is not going to force it. Okay? Even though God is reigning and ruling and orchestrating, we still have opportunity to make the choice. Right? So if God says to you, go left, and his will is for us to go left, we still can choose to go right. Okay? That doesn't change God's will. God's will is for us to go left. We chose to go right. What that does mean is that there's going to be consequences. Right? God's will will ultimately prevail even in our disobedience. Right? Now some would say, well, then that doesn't that 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 takes away our choice. Actually, it doesn't. God's will prevailing doesn't doesn't take away our choice. It actually gets us to cons to really consider obeying Him, right? So another question I ask is this: If God's will, and maybe you're asking it to me, if God's will ultimately prevails, then why follow it? Right? If 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 I'm going if, if me going right eventually leads to me going left, then what's then why don't I just keep doing whatever I want to do? Mm. Right? People are asking this question. I, I don't know, I've asked this question. Maybe you have it, but it's out there. Mm -hmm. Why trust God? Why trust Christ? Why listen to the Holy Spirit. And again, God brought me back to the point that there are consequences. Nobody gets out free. Or I should say, nobody escapes what they've done or what they haven't done. We got a seat for you. So, Everybody's aware of consequences, right? Mm -hmm. Right? What are consequences? That's a real question. <laughs> punishment. Okay. Punishment, what else? The end result of the decision that you make. Exactly. Right. The end result of the decision you make, which can be either good or bad, right? You eating healthy, <laughs> the result. The consequence of healthy eating is improved function and all that other stuff, energy. and But the consequence of you not eating healthy could be sickness, could be hospital visits, could, could be, you know, poor vision or whatever, right? So there are consequences that are associated with our decisions, our actions. And obedience to God yields prosperity or success, while disobedience to God yields poverty or unsuccess. So, yes, God's will is going to prevail because God is moving and, and shaping and intervening and interceding, but he's doing it right to bring about his plan. The, 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 the thing that we want to do is be on the right side of his plan. Mm -hmm. Right? And the, and the beautiful thing is that even when we are on the wrong side, God's grace comes along and offers us an opportunity to get on the right side of his plan. Mm -hmm. And the prayer is that, you know, when God offers that grace, when he offers that opportunity, that we don't waste it, that we don't miss it, um, that we take it, and then we get back into the place that he wants us to be. So Paul said, and we love this scripture, right? 
This was this this is Lady Mary's favorite scripture. She she said it all the time. I'm here scared. <laughs> and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those he got foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So let's just kind of walk through it a little bit. The Bible says that we know that in all things. It doesn't say that we know that all things. The, the, the key there is that in. You know, if you look at the King James... It says, and we know that God causes all things. Mm -hmm. So it puts the onus on him, and not you, and not the circumstance. It puts it back where it needs to be, because again, remember, we said that God's providence is the continual foreseeing of and attending to the care and con uh, control of his creation. Mm -hmm. Right? So, not all things, it's in all things. So whether you're in a, what we would consider a good situation or a bad situation, whether you're up or down, whether it's the, the, the sunshiny season or the, 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 the valley low season, does not matter. That does, that's, that does not dictate, that does not move God's position. Right? It doesn't change what he is doing or what he will do. What it does is it gives us opportunity to either get in line with his will or stay outside of his will. Right? God is consistently walking us towards the end, walking us towards uh, that final destination of our journey. Right? So we know that in all things, in, in all circumstances, in all situations, and that God works for the good of those who love him. Now, that, that's a qualifier, right? It didn't say for all people. It says for the good of those who love him. And here's the thing, too. Even the people that don't love him still somehow get the benefit of God's love. But God's working for the good of those who love him, who have been called. What does that word, what does that mean to be called according to his purpose? Chosen. Chosen? Sure. What else? What's another call? Is everybody called? Well, yeah. You say no. Why not? Why is everybody not called? Because if you're called, that means that uh, some people aren't called. Otherwise, it would just say everybody. <laughs> okay. I like that. So, not everybody's called because the text indicates, the, the text is given sort of a, a hint of, well, that's a qualifier. So either either they're they're called people and they're not called people. Okay, you you you're running on the Calvinistic side. All right. I would say we that. Gonna, we talk about it. I would say that everybody's called from John three sixteen. <clears throat> so you know God does have that gift for everyone. Then in the free will piece, you have the right to pick them. I mean to to answer the call or not. Okay. Because he doesn't want anybody to die. He wants sure. all of us to be, but he knows that's not going to happen, so I take that. So, you're absolutely right. This is just a, I'm not, you're, you're not wrong. I'm going to tease out what you're, what I, what, what, what I think you want to say there. Mm -hmm. So, God has called mm -hmm. everybody, right? So, when we get that, for those God, for those God foreknew, he also predestined. Right? There's this doctrine of uh, predestination that suggests that there are people who are predestined for heaven, predestined for hell. And so if that be the case, 
they ask the question, well, why should I accept Christ as Savior? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm predestined to end in the lake of fire, mm -hmm. what, what is the point? And if I'm predestined to end up in heaven, what's the point? I might as well live my life and do whatever I want to do because heaven is my destination, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So here's, here's, the, here's, the, here's the push. Everybody is called, but not everybody answers. That's right. Okay? So, yes, God, uh, before the foundations of the world, predestined, uh, elected, because y'all hear that word, the elect. The elect are the ones that, that accepted uh, their nomination. Okay? The ones that accepted God's gift of salvation. Everybody is, is elected, but not everybody accepts the office. Not everybody accepts the position. So when you say there are some who aren't called, it's it's a uh, the 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 refined way of thinking that is there are those that don't accept the call, mm -hmm. and they end up on the outside. So God called everybody because His purpose for humanity, right? When we look at the garden, was what perfect union with Him, right? So if that was His original plan, right, it didn't just start. Excuse me. It didn't just uh, end with Adam and Eve. It, it it was for all of humanity that would continue forth from them, right? So for those he foreknew, everybody, he also predestined everybody to do what? Be conformed to the image of his son, right? He's talking now about uh, a salvation. Right? I want you to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn, right? Because Jesus is our access point to God, to heaven, to reconciliation. Firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And so those he predestined, he called. And those he called, he justified. What's justification? Made righteous, right? Uh, 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 Pastor Tracy Brown says justification is just as if you didn't do it, mm -hmm. right? So in the court of law, right, Jesus stepped in and said, no, y'all know they good because they didn't do it. I'm the one that, you know, will testify to their innocence, right? So he justified, and then those he justified, he glorified. Right? Glorification is, a, is something that hasn't happened yet. Right? We will be glorified when he returns. So, it's important to understand, right? again, that, that overarching thing of, of his providence is, is about trusting his way. Right? That, again, the story that we see throughout the Bible of... And, I, and don't don't beat me up too much, Lady K. Um, of, of, of Queen Esther, right? And 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 you know she said, "What was it for such time as this, right? If I if I perish, I perish, right?" So she's in this moment. It, it was it was God's providence that that got her into that space and that kept her in that space that positioned her at the right time to advocate on behalf of her people mm -hmm. and to and to act as a Christ type, a savior mm -hmm. uh, in that moment, right? That that's that's God's providence. It was it was God's providence that Daniel, when he was taken into Babylonian captivity, that he would be in the uh, 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 administrative program of Nebuchadnezzar, rise to power, be hated on by uh, the officials and then thrown into the lion's den. Mm -hmm. It was his providence that placed the three Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace to demonstrate that he was more powerful than anything that had been created. It, it, it was his providence, right, that put Paul in a position to persecute the Jews and then be struck down on the road to Damascus mm. with blindness so that he could speak to him and he hear him. And then Ananias, it was God's providence to take him 
to lay hands on him so that the scales will fall from his eyes. There's no scripture for that. It was God's providence that uh, um, Hannah was barren for so long and then blessed her with Samuel. And then after that, the Bible talks about the fruit of her womb being multiplied. God's providence. He, 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 he moves. Right? It was God's providence for Israel to wander in the wilderness. It was his providence for them to be in Egypt. Think about it. Joseph and Pharaoh. They're in Goshen. They living it up. They're doing well. And then all of a sudden, that whole generation dies out. And then here comes this new Pharaoh. That say, hey, I don't know nothing about y'all relationship. I frankly don't care about y'all relationship. All of these people is multiplying, and if they really understood that they could overtake us, then we're in trouble. So what do I need to do? I need to oppress them. It was the providence, the orchestration of God that Israel was taken into Egyptian captivity. And it was the providence of God that this boy, Moses, would be born thrown into a basket made of pitch and tar, put on the river, found by Pharaoh's family, raised in the, in the palace, and then becoming the... Y'all, I'm just telling you the Bible. It's like Lazarus. God's, yes. God's providence. It's God's, it's God's providence that Jesus took his time getting to the tomb. Because there was a belief that, you know, at, at, at over three days, you, you still had opportunity. You, you, you may not have been dead. <laughs> but Jesus waited until he was good and dead to call him to say, Lazarus, yeah. come forth. And then Lazarus had to make the decision if he was going to come forth. Mm -hmm. He still had choice. Mm -hmm. Lazarus could have stayed dead. Mm -hmm. Because that's that free agency, that gift that God offered us. Let me say this. God's heart guides his hand to care for and control his creation. That is to say, God's love directs God's movements of support and influence over God's handiwork. God's love directs God's movements of support and influence over God's handiwork. Everything that God made was good. Right? Genesis. Right? And it was good. And it was good. It was so, so, so good. Right? And guess what? I believe that God wanted to keep it that way. I believe that God had, his original intention was to keep his creation good. And by the way, creation was a single event. Nothing's being created now. That happened already. God's care and control of it is ongoing. Right? Kendall and Kyle were born on one day. <laughs> Lady Kay and I's care and control over them is continuing. Right? So, same thing with God. Right? God continues to care and control his creation in order that his plan is fulfilled. And his ultimate plan is singular. And that's salvation. Now, I'm not saying that Christ hasn't come and that he hasn't done the work of making a way for salvation. But yet there are still people here that are unsaved. Right? And I think it was Peter who said that God is not slow in or God is not slack in his promise, but he is patient, not wanting any to perish. I get that right, y'all? Bible, Bible readers? Right? So his ultimate goal is that everyone be with him. And what you said, Sister Jessica, is true. There are some that won't. And it's proven in the word of God. Jesus said that 
they'll have eyes that won't see. They'll have ears that won't hear. And, and, and Jesus said, let, let them be. You, you want to stay blind? You want to stay deaf? Fine. And there are some that, that are going to do that. But that doesn't mean that God, his love, his grace, his mercy, all of that still continues to flow and still continues to be offered. God is still moving within the means of, of creation to ensure that his will prevails. God saw and knew and made provision for Adam and Eve in the garden. After they had sinned and had to be dismissed, God did the providere, right? He, he had the foresight. He had the attendance to their need. You see that? Mm -hmm. They did wrong. He didn't. Mm -hmm. But even in their wrongdoing, right, God was steadily working for, for, for their good. Because they were called. And they were supposed to be conformed to, to his image. As a matter of fact, they were the first people to be made in his image. Mm -hmm. Right? And he made them. Oh. Okay. Well, that's the end of the slide. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm almost done anyway. So, God's providence is like him. It's eternal. Get that? Mm -hmm. It's eternal. It was given back then. It's present right now. In this very moment, God's, if you just think about the last five hours of your life, mm -hmm. you will hopefully be able to see the providence of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, 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 the meeting of your need before you even knew you had it. Your running into it. Your removal from the danger. Your walking through the danger if, if he chooses not to remove you. His protection in the midst of it. That doesn't mean that you're not going to feel it because the Bible says the weapon will form but it won't prosper. So again, that, that's not to suggest that you don't get hurt, per se, or that you don't feel pain, but it does mean that it won't overcome you. It won't defeat you. Right? And the great news about God's providence is that it will continue until Christ returns. So, again, my hope is that we would really lean into trusting his way. That, that's really what I believe the Lord has been, been, been sharing. You know, he, shared, he, he shared that on Sunday in, that, in the sermon and then sharing it even on th uh, Wednesday in the midweek man and today. That there is, and perhaps he's saying this because there's a way coming up soon that may not make sense. I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to be prophetic or anything like that. But perhaps God is really impressing this, this, this doctrine of providence because for some of us, there are going to be times where it doesn't make sense. There are going to be pathways that were down that may look uncomfortable, uh, unappealing, like, God, why, why am I here? Right? Some of it will be of our own choosing, mm -hmm. yeah. and some of it won't. Mm -hmm. But regardless of that, just remember that God is in control. Mm -hmm. That God is overseeing it. That God is governing it. In the same way that God is governing the 
zoo that my house has become because every animal in nature wants to be in my backyard right now. Cats and dogs and foxes and gophers and squirrels and cooper's hawks and who cares? Cooper's hawks. Hawks. Oh the hawks. Yeah, everything. I'm like Lord what is so attractive about this backyard? You gotta build the ark and they will come. But all of it, all of it is under his authority. Wow. And I just have to trust that he is handling it. Yes. Even though I don't want it, believe me, I don't. But God is in charge, and God is in control. And the more that we believe that, and the more that we trust that, I think the greater um, our relationship with him is, and the greater... Um, that we can help others, mm -hmm. right? So that's that's really it, y'all. Trusting His way, trusting that God has it all figured out. Because the truth is, even when we think we have it figured out, we really don't. Come on. Mm -hmm. Even when we've come to a conclusion that makes sense, Come on. there's still something beyond it that we cannot see. And he can see. Mm -hmm. And that's where that faith, right, really helps us. That's where that faith really kind of kicks in a higher gear. Mm -hmm. So, trust in the providence of God. Mm -hmm. Believe that he has the best interest at heart, even if it doesn't look like it, even if it doesn't feel like it. God knows all, God sees all, and God can do all. Amen? Amen. 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 Is there any questions, comments, thoughts, or concerns? Sister Renee, I pray that you are, uh, that, that you choose to get up a little bit earlier <laughs> so that you get to your job. Maybe a different route, I don't know. What's um, scripture Keeps coming to me as you were doing the example. Uh, all sickness is not under the death. What's the end part of that? The yeah, that's for I mean, the glory of God. It's for yeah. the glory of God. Yeah, yeah. This well, it was this sickness will it will not end in uh, well. It, this sickness does not end in death, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, there are times that we are afflicted, mm -hmm. um, and it isn't to to cause our physical death, mm -hmm. and maybe to cause a death. Mm. Right. What was um, this that I was, uh, it, it was maybe, on the end? The end of it is for because it wasn't that didn't wasn't that in the scripture when well it they all said to that God, that's what you're asking yeah because basically like you said he waited that long time so God could be glorified in the situation basically that yeah that even 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 David says that you know it was good that I was afflicted mm -hmm. right he. He describes the affliction as a tool that God used mm -hmm. um, to develop him, to build him, to mature him. But ultimately, it's all for God's glory, mm -hmm. right? It's all for God's glory, for his honor, and for his praise. So, yeah, there are moments of affliction. There are moments of sickness and suffering. Um, it may not end, like I said, in a physical death, but it may end in a kind of death. God may be trying to kill off. Some, some habits, mm -hmm. some behaviors, some thinking, some yeah. some some heart issues, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then again, it could be a physical illness that God wants you to experience so that you come to really appreciate and know Him as healer, mm -hmm. right? As as the one. So so yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. So someone says this providence. I mean. Do they always, does it always imply that it's God? I mean, you said providence of God, but just providence in and of itself. Does it just, does it imply that, oh, we're talking about God's providence, or someone could believe it's due to something else, you know? Well, if it's due to something else, then we're talking about, we're, we're not talking about, well, obviously we're not talking about God's providence, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's when you get into the, the, the sort of murky waters of, of Fate, chance, happenstance, coincidence, and all those other things. We're not really talking about providence anymore. Right? We're talking about 
you know, the universe, right? The universe is speaking and telling me, well, okay. But if the universe is speaking, you can make the universe say whatever you want it to say. What you can't do is make God say what you want him to say. Right? So if it's God speaking, God will say what God wants to say. The people that deal in chance and fate and happenstance and all that other stuff, they use that as rationale for both suffering and success. Right? But God's providence is over all of it. And he is the one that kind of determines how things end up, so to speak. And again, I know it's, again, a difficult thought, a difficult conversation. That's why at the beginning, I, I preface it with, we're not going to answer every question because there's still going to be questions left, mm. right? It all comes down to really trusting in God and, and believing in him, his way, right? Mm -hmm. Following that and, 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 and holding on to your, if this is his leading, his doing, then I'm going to hang on and, and stick it out, right? Same way to Job. Job was like, this has to be God, right? This ain't, this ain't, this ain't nobody else doing this. This is God. Mm -hmm. And maybe I don't get it, but I'm going to trust him. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a moment where God had to tighten him up because <laughs> he said, well, were you there when I was creating the mountains yeah. and the stars? And, it out. Right, were you there? You know, so, yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging concept to fully grasp, but one that is of great importance to us as believers. Mm -hmm. um, even, though, even, even in the Bible, it's not something, it's like the Trinity, it's not something that's explicitly said, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's yet there. It is, it is, the Bible is replete with stories of God's providence. Right? Just listen. Christ is the ultimate story of God's providence. He said, I must suffer and die. Right? That was God's will. Mm -hmm. That was God's way for Christ. Christ couldn't escape that. In the garden, mm -hmm. he, he helped us understand. Mm -hmm. Right? If there's any way, let this cup pass from me. <laughs> right? And then Yet not my will, but thy yes. will be done. So, that I, I, I appreciate that question, and and believe me, if you get into those conversations, just ask the Spirit of God to help you for yourself, but also in your sharing with others, because you're going to get those sort of things. You're going to get them. Anyone else? Funny, I was thinking. As you teach, uh, scriptures always come to my mind, but I keep um, thinking on, in all your ways, acknowledge him, you know, make your path straight. So if you say focus even on that piece, you, can, you have a stand a better chance of, of walking in his prophets will. Like, right, that's... So we have the instruction to do what he wants us to do. And basically what you're teaching us, you know, broaden it the understanding of it out. So you have to go to his word to do his will and live his way. Yes. That's so I you know, y'all hear me say all the time if my mama was here, she would say, but if my daddy was here, <laughs> he would say, Yes, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to on the sin, right? So that that piece right there that says lean not. So don't rely on mm -hmm. what you comprehend. Because what you comprehend is limited mm -hmm. because of your of our humanity. Mm -hmm. Right? If we just if all we did was rely on that, well then we would really be lost. We would really struggle to do some of the things that God is asking or has asked us to do. But when we allow our faith to take hold and just in our like it says in all our ways acknowledge them, right? He'll be left. the one. He'll be the one that even he says go left. You look left, and it doesn't look like left is <laughs> the right choice or the correct choice. But acknowledging him will 
empower you, push you it tries to go, to go left. Mm -hmm. Because even though right might look clear, right. there could be danger down there. That's true. There could be something mm -hmm. that you don't know that's down there that God don't want you to see, that mm -hmm. God don't want you to experience, that God doesn't want you to be introduced to. Mm -hmm. So go left. Anybody else? All right. Well, um, tomorrow is anniversary time. So tomorrow night at 7 o'clock here, we're going to have uh, Pastor Christian Covington come and share a word. And then on Saturday is Lady King's Brunch. Outdoors, it's going to be a wonderful celebration, and then we'll come back, God willing, on Sunday morning, 10 a.m. And we'll have, uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, on Saturday is uh, Pastor Donna Osuansa. She was a preacher for Women's Day, I think, last year, oh, two years ago. Uh, and then Sunday, we'll have um, our senior um, pastor. Um, Reverend Dr. Bernadette Glover from St. Paul and Montclair. Uh, just a gem, really, in, in the kingdom of God. Preacher's preacher, teacher's teacher. She is um, an absolute favorite of mine. And so I'm looking forward to celebrating with you all. Um, as Emeritus would say, in this range, you for me now, you know, pastor needs people to lead. So I thank you for being that those people um, that afforded me the privilege to be a leader, to, to be a, a shepherd, under shepherd, I should say, um, here. So thank you so much uh, for that. That's it. That's all I've got. Um, let's stand so we can be dismissed. Patience for open doors needed open doors. Amen. Patience. My school test. Me too. of the world even, Lord God, yes. because you are the word, the living word, and we thank you that yes. now you have it written, and have it in uh, auditory form, it, uh, having a piece of you right here with us, Lord God, thank so you. help thank us you. to respect that, help us to honor it, yes. help us, Lord God, to pay attention when you talk to us, Yes, we thank you, God, for um, 
the reminder that you are in charge, that you are the creator. You quite literally the sustainer of life. Amen. So Lord God, no matter how challenging things are for us, God, Lord God, no matter the chaos around our lives and even the free will of people that at times choose to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. We thank you, God, that you are above all of it, that you are high, that you are lifted up, and we magnify your name, oh God. Yes. We thank you because it's not just about all things working together for our good, but yes. we thank you, God, that you will get the glory, that you will get the honor, and we give you the praise. We choose to do so. So, Lord God, your word talks about if someone is in trouble or if they're hurting or if they're sick that we should pray so today Lord God we come in prayer together yes. we lift the request for God some of whom are folks who are struggling with medical concerns yes. some of whom folks are struggling with emotional concerns yes. and mental health concerns oh God we thank you that you are right there that you have not left us nor will you forsake us yes. because we are your children we are your called, we are the predestined, and we're the ones that have answered the call on tonight. So we stand, Lord God, proxy for all of those that need the prayer. We know that the prayers of the righteous will avail, Lord God, and your word will not return void. So we pray the word of God right back to you, the author of the word. We're not holding you accountable because there's no way to, Lord, hold you well. accountable because you uh, created accountability. We don't even have what it takes, Lord God, so we dare not say or demand that you follow up on your word. You do so because that's who you are. You have yes, thank you. Thank you. And we just live by faith, grateful that you will move. Yes. So, Lord God, touch those who need healing in their bodies. Yes, touch God. those that need healing in their hearts and their minds. Yes, God. Lord God, touch those that may be struggling financially. Yes. Touch those, Lord God, who are waiting on employment. Yes. Touch those, Lord God, that need necessities. Touch, yes, Lord God, those that are the broken hearted. May they be comforted, Lord God. Yes, Touch Lord those, Jesus. Lord God, who have uh, situations where they could seek revenge, oh God, yes, but they Lord. choose to walk in faith yes. and in forgiveness, oh God. Yes. Touch those that need reconciliation in families yes. and even yes. reconciliation in their own heart and mind. Yes. We are thankful. We are grateful tonight, oh God. We bring ourselves to you. We yes. pray that you would have your way, Savior, the living God. Fall fresh on us tonight. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We pause in your presence. Yes, God. Because, Lord God, we are really clear. If you do nothing else for us, you've done enough. Amen. And you remain God. Yes. And besides you, there is none. There is no no equal, no opposite. There is no such thing as yin and yang. There's no such thing as universe without you, oh God. Yes. You are above and everything else is beneath. Yes, God. Yes. So we acknowledge your presence. Thank you, God. We thank you for this weekend and what it will be. Please yes. bless us and keep us safe. Prepare the word yes. in the belly of your preacher folks who will come. Help yes. us to listen, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you would take us from this place safely. We pray, Lord God, that we would follow your leading, that yes, we would God. listen to the still, small voice as it tells us, go left, go mm -hmm. right, be still, sit down, get up to speak. Lord God, may we stay on the straight path yes, because God. we obey you. Yes, God. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank, Thank you, God. Thank you for washing Thank you, us God. clean. Thank you, God. Creating us a clean heart. Bless you, And renew a right spirit in us. Thank you, God. Wash us again, oh God, that we might go out and bear the image of you in this world. For truly, Lord God, this world is in desperate need of a savior. Yes. Let us rightly represent you so that people can see Jesus. Please help us not to be so judgmental, so apathetic, but may we truly show love, kindness. May we represent you in everything that we say and do. We give you glory. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.